We wish to be clear that data-driven design isn't anything new. Right back at the start of my career, uh, I was a young engineer asked to do the cooling load calculations for a large building, which I did, and proudly took them to the senior engineer on the project, who took one look at the result and said, the answer should be four times what you're showing me, there's something wrong here, go and check. And he was right, I'd made a mistake, and the answer was four times. So how did he know? In some ways, that's the human example of data-driven design. He had 30 years of experience working on numerous projects of different types, and he had over that time synthesized uh, all of the information from those projects to know that a building of this type needed a cooling load of uh, a particular size, and he was able to convey that to me. We are a human-centered firm. We have been engaging with clients for a very long time, and we've always had it in, in our ethos to, to have the end user at heart. Uh, and I think that what sets us apart from our, uh, our competitors is the fact that we're able to do that. We're able to leverage technology in a very humanizing way. In the future, there might be some diff different way to both communicate design, deliver our design, and this might happen in a bit more virtual space. Our clients expect us to understand broadly their business and their work, and then the expectation is that you can use data and other sort of analytical methods to actually evaluate what you've done or to collect more information, synthesize more information more quickly than you ever uh, were expected to do. Understanding that um, you know, we want to move beyond the theoretical in terms of thinking about the future of our clients' organizations and start to get into the space where we really can start to connect their design aspirations to their strategic objectives and create greater value and have, have an impact on the organization and, and what it does on a daily basis. There's so much going on in the world and we do so much work in that space, but we need to be sure that we are, are able to tell the best stories, to punch through all the noise. If we can't tell that story, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna make any impact. And that's what we wanna do. We wanna shape a better world. We wanna have impact. I think the promise of data-driven design now is that we can pull together those experiences from all those projects and all those senior engineers and make them available to everybody that's working in the firm. Now, of course, that imposes a lot of challenges in terms of collecting that data and making sure that it's good, but it is really an exciting and promising future. Here at Arup, we've already looked towards developing some tools to allow us to visualize a building in full scale, whether it's using virtual reality tools or augmented reality tools. And in our own experience lab here in New York, we've actually used this as a test ground to test a lot of emerging technologies and use them on projects where we can instead have stakeholders come sit in a concert chair, for instance, and have them, in, in fact, experience the sight lines of a performance before the space has even been built. In the Fulton Center, the technology we brought to bear was intended to take the, the, the value that, that that project was supposed to deliver uh, and to make sure that we remain mindful of the, the way the technology was supposed to do that. Many people don't know the reason why the cable net and the Oculus came into the design of the Fulton Center at, at the beginning. Uh, and it, it has a lot to do with the fact that we needed a way to incentivize people to move through the space in a way that was conducive to the way that the trains work, but to allow that process to disappear and to connect us directly with the needs of the users, both within the building itself and then within the broader context of New York City.